Here's another little clever little um, uh, simple little thing that um, little driving aids. And then you see this um, this uh, sliding door. This is one of the old style sliding doors. It's metal crashed down on the ground. But some of the people are doing now is the whole bottom half of this door that goes up down that cut it off and have replaced it with a conveyor belt curtain. And, and then if you close that down, it doesn't hurt the pigs, and they don't go through that. You know, and it's just a curtain there, rather than the metal gate. You know, a lot of the plants have put that in now. This is one of like curved chute systems. Why make it curved? Because as the animals go around the curve, they think they're going back to where they came from. Notice that this isn't all stuffed full of cap. I can't emphasize enough the importance of filling these pens half full. Also, you see the backstop gate there that walk through and they can't back up? Sometimes they block at this. Another simple little thing that we did is we put a remote control rope on this so a guy there in the back could hold open that gate. That was just another example of a very, very, very simple little thing that you could do on, you know, to improve the handling. Okay, now I want to get into stunning. There's a cartridge-fired captive bolt stunner. You know what the number one problem was we found with stunning? The lack of magnets. Big number one. I did a survey for the USDA in 1996. It's on my website, grandon.com. It's just my last name. And, uh, you know, lack of maintenance. I mean, that's pretty shocking. Um, and then these, these guns work extremely well if they're maintained. Now, the other thing you've got to look out for in little plants, since this works with a blank cartridge, is damp cartridges. We had a bunch of plants failing a McDonald's audit, and we couldn't figure out what was wrong. And I finally figured out that they were storing their cartridges in a damp maintenance shop right next to the slaughter floor, and it was all foggy and steamy, and, and we just got them to store their cartridges in the office, in with the office supplies, and that solved the problem. You know, it seems like really little details, but little details really, really, really matter. And this just shows another air-operated stoner. This is a good setup. They actually got kind of a little window here that just looks out onto a blank wall. And the cat will see a light there, and then they'll put their head up. These stun boxes, you must have non-slip flooring. Every single plant, we had to fix the floor of the stun box. And then some of the old-fashioned ones, I've got a really crummy step floor, like that's just sharp. you got to jackhammer those out and make it flat. But that still is, you know, weekend work. You're not talking about the capital expense. Most of the other boxes, we just had to put steel rods onto the floor. And if you put those rods in, never put them on top of each other like this, they've got to be. And there's a picture on my website that shows how to make those steel rod things. This is the animal entering a um, center track restrainer system I designed for large plants. And you notice there, you've got good non-slip floor. Cleat spacing, eight inches apart. Another big controversy that comes up is the whole issue of chain speed. You know what we found, and I've done quite a lot of data on this, little plants, big plants, they're just about the same. What's a problem is overloaded equipment and people. Now you could have a little plant that originally started out at maybe 15 cattle an hour, and you push it to 30, and that can be a mess. Or you could have a plant that was 60 or 70 an hour, you pushed it up to 120, and that's a mess. When you overload things, this is where you get into trouble. And the thing is, is, is when you overload a piece of equipment or you overload a person, it doesn't gradually get worse, it goes, it just drops right down. You know, we have plants running 390 an hour, some people say, well, that's just awful. Well, I took a very well-known animal welfare person to this plant, a swift plant in Greeley, in fact, and we're standing there, it's working very nicely and smoothly, and she goes, is this a big plant? I said, yes, one of the biggest in the world. You know, it's a matter of it being staffed and set up correctly. You overload it, then you've got trouble. But you can have that trouble all the way down to some of the smallest plants. And at least down at home in the States, where right now we're finding some nasty, nasty messes. We're still finding them in the slaughter plants. It's some little plants. They're not in the McDonald's, Wendy's, Burger King, or KFC system. I mean, they're totally outside that system. There's been some very bad things going on. And, and, uh, and I've done a lot of talks with some of the organic people, and I said, you better check out your local slaughter plant and make sure it's not doing something nasty. I had a, a lady call me up that was running a farmer's market, you know, in a real upscale neighborhood, 
and there was a sheep plant. You see, unfortunately, down in the U.S. on religious slaughter, there's no regulations. So the bad places like hang them up alive, they were hanging live sheep up. And she says, is that all right? I said, no, it's not all right. You know, you're going to have to make a shoot to put those sheep in, and you just can't be doing that. You know, you're an upscale farmer's market. I can assure you the big lamb plant doesn't do that. Now, we all know you've got to you know, shoot the stunner in the correct position. These are the slides I use for teaching a humane slaughter class. Um, but what I found is, the thing that was interesting is the maintenance was a much bigger issue than training the people. And the good thing that's happened now is all of the companies that make these guns now have a test stand that you can put the gun on, a test, to see if it hits hard enough. Well, before the audit started, only one company made a test stand for their stun gun. Now, everybody has a test stand, and you can shoot the gun in there and see if it's hitting hard enough. And, make, and on that test to make sure it's maintained. This shows the, um, the center track restrainer system, and there's a lot of behavior things that make this work. And this whole thing is seven feet above the ground, and then underneath here, you've got like sort of a little fault for it. Cattle have lousy depth perception. So you give them the illusion that, that they can just walk in there because if they see the visual cliff, they won't go in. And then this little the rack here, it's just a block division. You gotta make sure that when the head pops out here, their feet are off that entrance ramp. And one of the things that drive me crazy when we were trying to put these things in is these different shops, the welding shops, would take bits and pieces off of this thing and they, because they didn't understand why we had to have that extra steel. Well, that extra steel was on there strictly for behavior reason. And when I first made it, we didn't have those things on. And the cattle got really agitated, so then I laid a piece of cardboard over the top. Cardboard and duct tape, you know, holding in, you know, 1,300 pound steers. Or they'd let the false floor come off, and then I'm like putting it back on again. You know, it's hard for people sometimes to recognize something that's on there just for behavior. The only problem is if you don't have it on there, it doesn't work right. There's the animal um, sitting on the, on, on the conveyor. Actually, that picture was taken in Canada. Uh, it's very important that um, this be maintained, that you don't get sharp edges. I'm going to be talking about a vocalization score, which in the beginning people thought would just be impossible, that out of 100 cattle, you're only allowed to have three cattle mooing and bellering during handling. They thought, well, you're never going to do that. It's just impossible. Okay, this shows a Jarvis uh, pneumatic uh, stun gun. And a lot of the plants now have a dedicated maintenance program on these guns. But you know what? They didn't have a dedicated maintenance program on the air supply and the air compressor. And last year I found two messed up air compressors. I found dirt in it, uh, water in it. They didn't, one plant didn't even have, have a lubricator. You know, they weren't paying attention. You know, the air compressor is part of the system too. And you've got to take care of it also. I mean, you've got to maintain. Again, that's another maintenance thing. In other words, management was auditing the care of the gun, but they weren't auditing the care of the air supply. And I saw a guy take the hose off that thing and pour oil on it. I go, wait a minute, don't they have a lubricator on this thing? You're not supposed to pour oil into the hose. No, nope, no lubricator, no air filler, no water trap. I go, come on now. Now you see this little, uh, little curtain hanging down here? That's the block the vision of the next animal. You gotta make sure you don't let that get ripped off. This is where you get into details, details, details. Animals are really into details. You better, if that curtain gets ripped off, you better put another one up there. It's just a piece of conveyor belt. But it's a really important piece of conveyor belt. This is all the things you can troubleshoot for. I've made checklists on things that can cause animals not to go into the restrainer easily. Uh, one of the problems I have is uh, plants uh, maintenance departments modifying stuff, and then I gotta go back and put it back, but I find it's easier for people a lot of times to troubleshoot if I just have lists of things that they can go over. Okay, let's get into electric stunning. Captive bolt using a penetrating captive bolt, and that's done right, it kills your animal instantly. Now there's some plants that will use a non-penetrating captive bolt uh, for, for a Muslim slaughter. You know, it just has, works with impact. That doesn't work quite as well as the penetrating captive bolt. The, no, the non-penetrator, it'll work, but you have a very, very small margin of error. You've got to get it on absolutely exactly to get a good stun, and they need to be bled quickly when you're using that. 